Fellas, say goodbye to Chuck Sherman the boy. I am now a man. I highly recommend you join the club. We are doing the wild thing all night. Hey, what's up, everybody? This is Sherm. Sherman. I could build this food. Is that all you gonna eat? General Sherman realized and understood the importance of house music. So, do you know anything about techno? No. Listen. Get it on. Hey, hey, what's up, everybody? Welcome back to another brand new episode of Sherm in the Booth. Today is Monday, August 19th, 2019. This is episode 72072 of In the Booth, and this is going to be the first of a few different episodes that were recorded live at Serenity Bass Fest from a few weeks ago. Our first DJ producer up is none other than RJ Pickens. This guy is the man, a very, very talented producer, a very talented DJ, and just an overall good person. This man has been making waves in the scene for a long time i remember i actually saw him open up at spy bar four years ago or so it was one of the first times i had been to spy bar and this man honestly ushered me into the scene with his grace on the decks rj it is such a pleasure to have you on man thank you so much for making some time guys make sure you check out his record label vested and listen through the interview for his live set from serenity bass fest on saturday night thanks so much again let's get into episode 72 with rj pickens Like I said, I've been following you for quite some time, uh, so I'm pumped about this. Cheers, man. Absolutely. <laughs> Tony Tony is a big fan of you, too, because we, like I said, we, we fucking, we're house techno heads, man. Like, we go to spy bar as often as we can and all that shit, too. So, yeah. you know, like, probably, like, when you were, I don't know, like, started going out in Chicago or even beginning your DJ career, you, like, start to recognize locals because you go to the same places, right? Mm-hmm. That started happening me with you and Infinity. And I was like, God, who are these fucking guys just crushing these sets? <laughs> like, you know, and like as a DJ, I'm always like trying to learn, not like watch you, you know, transition and stuff, but mm-hmm. the flow of the set. And I can't remember who I saw you open for, but um, it was really special. And it was just like, I was like, fuck, you know, this guy's opening, like he's killing it. Like I can do something like this too. So well, and on you, behalf of all the other DJs that are trying to make it in the world, like we look up to guys like you, you know? Thank you, man. I, I mean, you've a had a lot of success. Compliment. How long have you been a DJ for now? Producer, um, DJ producer. So, all right, like, I mean, you can look back to like when I started DJing and then, you know, that's, you consider that the start, but obviously like yeah. for the first like hot minute, like you're not good, <laughs> dude, you know? <laughs> so I like the first time I even like started messing around with anything like that was probably like I was 18. And yeah. It was like when I, when I went away to college uh-huh. and like I made some friends and, right. you know, um, but yeah, like I, I've always just been like a lover of just well a lot of kinds of music and just yeah um, you know you find you find that that magic artist or track or whatever that like opens the gate for you yeah it's just like you connect with that and you're like holy shit and then the floodgates open you discover a ton (laughs) of like new amazing stuff you know Pandora's box that was kind of like what happened to me around like age 18 Mm -hmm. and, and like I discovered the Chemical Brothers through. Chemical some brothers like, some you know older friends of mine and stuff yeah. and and uh you know it was like when i when i joined college i you know i was a freshman but i joined a fraternity and mm-hmm. and uh so you know i had like the corrupting senior big brothers and you know senior whatever it's just same. like and so <laughs> <laughs> i totally i totally you know i mean i was probably bound to find this eventually but this is like yeah. how i found it and i just loved that it, it happened the way that it did and whatever and so um, but yeah, man, it wasn't until like I moved to, well, I should have graduated college in 2000. I took a couple victory laps sure. and, uh, Had some fun. I, yeah. And so like I, I graduated in like, um, like 2002 mm-hmm. and, um, where'd you go to college? Uh, I went to university of Illinois in Champaign, okay. Urbana. Of course. And, um, did it frat scene there is insane. <laughs> dude it's the party yeah. scene there that's a whole separate interview dude. yeah like, you're right you're <laughs> you <know>? totally right <laughs> like i got stories for days man yeah, and it's yeah, just yeah. like i have a lot of stories about a lot of those days so um <laughs> but yeah uh yeah i got done with school moved up to chicago and um i there was there's a promoter and event producer at the time that was called pure future mm-hmm. uh run by john curley who now heads up all the pow- like all the paradigm State, right stuff yeah and, and uh and so, um, yeah, so he's just been like, I mean, he's a forever scenester in like everything <laughs> that we're doing here in Chicago. Of course. He's just always been super involved and has, you know, just 
a crazy story himself and you know I gotta um, get him on his name comes up all the time too <laughs> dude, in interviews you know what man like how deep into the vault do you want to go if you get John Curley on an interview like, he's like, the man you know, yeah. and if you do like I'd yeah. actually like to sit in on it okay because, like, <laughs> I love the got, dual interviews he's got, he's got no, I don't even need to say shit like, oh, you, <laughs> I just want to hear him talk <laughs> okay so anyway um, yeah man like 2003 I started kind of getting involved with stuff in Chicago and mm -hmm. um, really just like I've always been the kind of person too with just like all of my friends that like you know I discover some awesome shit so I want I want to share it with other people you yeah know? so like, absolutely just recruiting your friends go to dope shows go yeah to, you know whatever um, and so naturally I kind of like was able to rope a lot of my friends into coming into you know checking out these shows and mm -hmm. whatever and then like you know eventually like you put together a fucking mix and yeah you, you know whatever and then it's but like yeah, I mean, it was, like, well-received and just, like... You're like, oh, yeah, shit. Once, once I kind of started doing that, it actually kind of, like... In one way, I could say it happened really fast, and then, like, in another way, it, like, obviously it took a while to progress yeah. to, you know, the way that things are now. Of course. But, um, yeah, man, like, it, like <laughs> the, first, the first show that I played for John, like, was a... It was a Paul Oakenfold show, and it was, like, I oh, played... Shit. Uh, I played, like, me and, and my good friend, like, they put us together back to back, and we played, like, in the, the second room, like, up in the mezzanine or, uh -huh. you know, whatever. Um, but then it was just, like, you know, we did, it like, we did while playing and, like, brought, like, a ton of our friends out and just, like, brought a lot to the, you know, kind of to the event and yeah. whatever. And so uh, the immediate next Friday, we both get put on opening for, like, Paul Van Dyke, like, directly. And so, Shit. like, and me and my buddy at the time, like, we like about shit ourselves because this is like our guy, this is like our hero right you know, right right that, like and, and <laughs> yeah and then like the very next week we opened for Paul Van Dyke and it was just like and then after that it was just on it was just like you just tried like at that point you know you just like okay like I can do like this might happen yeah this I is want like, this like this is you had that this moment is well received and you know whatever yeah. and then you just like kind of make it yeah kind of your path you yeah know? of course and everybody has a different path yeah you know? But Amen. it's, uh, but yeah, man, it's just, it's, it's a love and I, I don't know, like I'm probably a lifer. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> so, of course, man. Yeah. That's awesome. That's awesome. And are you from Chicago then? Uh, I'm from the Chicago area. Uh, I was born in St. Charles, like yeah. far west suburb. Yeah, sure. But I know. like, I mean, I lived there when I was like an infant yeah. and moved around a little bit when I was like younger, but, um, you know, went to kindergarten and stuff out in the west suburbs, like out in Naperville, Aurora area. But you're a Chicago and we guy. Went, we wound up, yeah. uh, we wound up, like you know, moving back there for third grade. So I wound up going to school with all the kids I started kindergarten with, which is cool. And, <laughs> That's awesome. And so that doesn't uh, happen. Actually, no, it no. really doesn't. And then yeah, I basically like grew up like out in like Aurora, Naperville. Right. Uh, yeah. Have your parents been a musical influence influence on you? Um, you know what they've. Neither one of them are musical in terms of like, you know, playing instruments or like whatever, but they definitely sure. always liked music. We always had music around in the house. Yeah. Like, you know, I remember them like giving me my first cassette tape, which is the Back to the Future soundtrack. Yes, <laughs> like, really? I, oh, dude, I love that tape. Like, I just, <laughs> I played it for that's probably awesome. 10 years straight, you know? like <laughs> um, Back to the Future, that's fucking yeah. awesome. That's a great soundtrack. But, uh, yeah, no, but the, like they always, they always encouraged me and my sister to like get mm -hmm. involved in, in music and stuff and like, so we always took, you know, piano lessons, whether we wanted to or not, or whether we, which I totally appreciate it now, yeah. you know? And while I'm like, I, I can't sit down and just like bang out pieces and, yeah. you know, whatever, but like it did, you know, teach me music theory. It taught me, you know, trained my ear. It yeah. like did a lot of really good things where it's like, I can play stuff by ear now, but it's just mm -hmm. like, if I sit down to try and read sheet music, like I could decipher it, but it's just like, I'm not practiced in that like, right. for a fucking long time. So it's just, I don't. Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. So, Absolutely. Yeah. What got you into like specifically the electronic music scene then? Um like I think that I've always been partial to it because especially like growing up in this area and whatever, there's always B ninety six, there was always, you know, so yeah. it was you know, they they were always playing, you know, like street mixes and stuff at night. Yeah, you know, whatever. There was always like, you know, good music that they were playing, but there was always other music that I liked and whatever too. Like I liked a lot of like like rock and alternative and industrial and just a bunch of other crazy shit you know mm -hmm. a bunch of punk rock a bunch of you know um so when i really i think truly started getting into electronic is when i discovered like nine inch nails and you know bands nice. like them and because it was like this aggressive like metal rock sound but it had mm -hmm. this like electronic infusion and i yeah. was like what i didn't realize it at the time but i was like like give me more of that shit you know <laughs> made you and feel so, some yeah and then yeah. It just yeah and then tastes progress and of course yeah man 
And now you're fucking crushing it in the house and techno scene, man. <laughs> Congratulations Thanks, man. on everything you've done. I mean, your music as well. I'll get into that in a little bit. But since you were talking about, obviously, your inspirations in Chicago, I mean, you've got an awesome resume of people you've supported, shows you've headlined, all that stuff. Um, venues like the Mid, RIP. Mm -hmm. So sad. Spybar, of course, State. Played Festival, Spring Awakening, North Coast. What are the differences you notice in playing a club versus a festival setting? And, you know, how do you prepare for something like either of those? Um... Yeah, they're two kind of different, they're, they're definitely different animals. Um, yeah. Like, you know, the, the club set, you'll usually have a little bit longer to play too, so you can like, yeah. you can take a little bit more time to take the musical journey you're mm -hmm. trying to take people on or whatever. Sure. And, um, but yeah, with like, with like a festival set, and, and not that I'm like, I've played a ton of them, but it just, you know, it, it just feels more condensed. It's like you have, you feel like you have to give people a little bit more in a little less time. Yeah. So, well um, said, absolutely. Yeah. So it's just, you know, like, I mean, you should always like stay true to your style, but at the same time, you should be considerate of the environment that you're playing in mm -hmm. and who your potential audience is. And, yeah. You know, all absolutely. of that. So it's just like, it just, that just plays into just, you know, being a good selector and what yeah. you choose and, you know, the rest is that. Because if you have a pile of amazing tracks that could all like work well together <sighs> in know. this regard, then that's like three quarters of the work right there. It's just, I know. You know. Then you just have to mix it and make it sound good. It's hard to narrow it down <laughs> for a festival set too, right? Yeah. Like we got a lot of weapons. You got a lot of weapons, you yeah. know, and you got to select it. And I think the thing that I've come to realize as well, you know, I'm from Indiana. I went to a lot of Chicago festivals and Midwest festivals. I went to Crossed, which is a house and techno festival, I think three years ago. Mm -hmm. And the sets were two hours, hour and a half, all extended. Yeah. And, you know, that was kind of my first real live exposure to house music. I had loved it before. Oh, cool. Well, that's, just, well that's not the norm. Exactly. Like, that, that exactly. was cool then. So, so I was used to hour sets. Right. That's like always what I had in my head. Right. And I was just like, I didn't realize that, like, I was so sick of fucking jumping at these other festivals. Like, <laughs> I, you know, nothing against North Coast Spring Awakening, but you know how it goes. Yeah. And you got to fit in all these acts. And then we went to Movement. That fucking changed my life. <laughs> that changed my life. And it's so interesting. I, so, love, I love hearing that from everyone. <laughs> <laughs> Every from single everybody. person. Yeah. Yep. You, so you've been? I have. So I, I guess my question to you on top of that is, you know, what do you think is the biggest difference between festivals and the different genres of music that they have in each, right? I think it really has to do with the people that are putting the festival together and what yeah. their musical direction is. Because, yeah. you know, the guys that all run movement in Detroit like it's I mean they're they're pretty niche in like what they're trying to curate oh, yeah. like they'll they'll vary a little bit from that spectrum just mm -hmm. to like tie in a little bit you know of a broader crowd yeah. but at the same time it's still a very narrowed crowd yeah. as opposed to I feel like most festivals you know unless they're curated a very specific way mm -hmm they're trying to provide an experience that caters to the most amount of people. Yeah. So of course, and it's you know, a business, right? Yeah, 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 exactly. And so then, you know, if they're treating it as exclusively as a business, like, yeah. which I mean, if you're throwing something at that level too, like you have yeah. to look at it that way. Of course. It's just like, well, what's going to sell the most tickets? What's going to, you know, then you just look, you can look at numbers, you can make educated guesses right. and, you know, just based on metrics, like, yeah. you know, what are the most kids listening to? Hence main stage, right? Gosh, I know. I love that though. And I, I'm seeing a lot more changes too, just in general. I mean, like I'm a, I'm a big fan of obviously house and techno sets and I see Chris Lorenzo is coming to Spy Bar to do an open and close set. Mm -hmm. And I love seeing like Carl Cox open a close set because I feel like as a DJ now that I've been doing it for long enough, mm -hmm. I get why they would always want to fucking do that. Right. You know, because they've got all this music. I mean, what's mm -hmm. the longest set you've ever played? Twelve plus hours. Yeah, right. I, I don't know. Like, yeah, what was maybe, that like? Maybe for fourteen. You, right? I mean, it, exhausting, but also an amazing time. Yeah, there's like a wheel or two that came off at the end, but like, <laughs> but yeah, yeah. I mean, it was, but it was really cool to just be able to play that much music and go in so many different directions and right. just, you know, like, yeah. I mean, as as somebody that loves to play music, right? right. You just like you want to share all of it, but yeah. you know, like just the way that everything is set up, you know, people are. Uh, you got to divide it up and you yeah. don't, you don't always get to say everything you get, you want to say musically, mm -hmm. you know? So it's just, that's what makes a set like that. So awesome. I know that's, and that's what like we fucking do it for. Right. Yeah. Like in a creative industry where you produce, where you DJ, where someone can have an opinion on something that you do, there can be a lot of moments of self doubt. Right. And I remember when I was starting off as a DJ, I'd be like thinking in my head and building up this negative thought where, is there somebody here that isn't going to like this or should I play for them? And then I fucking cut that shit out. And right. I said, I need to make sure I'm having fun first. Yep. Cause there's a quote that I love Derek Carter, of course, renowned Chicago DJ. If the DJ doesn't have any fun, why would anybody else be? Right. And I was like, 
that just hit home. Yeah. You know? Yeah, man. And I, 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 I take that real hard and fast with like anything that, even just like promos that you get for free, yeah. like music wise, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's just like, do I love this? Because if I don't, I'm probably not going to play it. Yes. You know? Because there's so much music out there now and everything yeah. is digital. There's no like, mm -hmm. you know, throttle to your ability to like yeah. get it out there we via can pressing or, yeah. you know, whatever. It's like anybody can get it and get it instantly, yeah. you know? So, why fuck with tracks that you don't love? Dude, absolutely. And you know what's funny? You were talking about Eric Johnson, Tsunami before. Yeah. We were talking about that. I was talking about like record box management and playlists and stuff. And he goes, dude, you need to go on your iTunes, your record box, and look at the songs you've played less than two or three times. Delete that shit. <laughs> I was like, God damn. Like, <laughs> why do I even have this song? Like, right. you know, a Biza, you know, mix from 2013. It's like some track. I don't even, I'm like, I've never played this. I'm never going to. You mm. know, I'd say it would be a bad song. But you got to play to your strengths. Yep. You know? Yeah. And for someone like you, too, who DJs all the time, what do you think in kind of this world we're living in where the motto is anyone can be a DJ or, you know, everyone wants to be a DJ? What's something that you feel is different um, than others about yourself, about your style? Okay. Um, well, I mean, in terms of what you just said, though, yeah. in terms of every, everybody, I, I think it's awesome that everybody has the ability mm -hmm. to become. Yeah, it's beautiful. You know? Um, it's it's never been easier or more readily available to make music or to like just try it with yeah. a relatively low barrier mm -hmm. cost to entry. You yeah, know? absolutely. So it's I'm I'm all for that. Like if people yeah. like want to get into it, dude, get into do Fucking it. Do you it. know, I agree. <laughs> but um, yeah, man, I I guess it's it's kind of in terms of the way that like maybe I approach things or look at things. It's I don't it's kind of hard to like describe maybe what sets me apart, mm -hmm. but I can, I can say what works for me. Yeah, of course. And what keeps what, it coming back, you know? Well, I mean, ultimately, man, it's just, you know, don't devote so much time to something if you don't love it. <laughs> yeah. Number one, you yeah. know, and <laughs> you know, number two, just like, I don't know. I'm not even sure exactly what I want to say, but it's just, I understand. you know, it's like you, in, in, in doing this and doing it because you love it and because you always want to, you know, be part of it, 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 like, sort of plays into, like, the principle of, like, mastery of a craft, right? Yeah. And it's just, the most important thing about that, I've, like, I did some reading once and it just covered, like, that whole concept mm -hmm. and just, it was a really thorough thing about it and it's just, if you decide that you want to be a master of your craft, you, it's, it's not a destination that you reach. It's just, mm -hmm. you've com you're, you're essentially committing to a lifelong of learning right. and always becoming better than the day before yeah. at your craft. That's what makes you a master of your craft, Absolutely. you know? And so it's just, I don't know, like I just have a love for doing things like in that way, like because I feel them and yeah. I want other people to feel them too. Yeah. Yeah. You get a lot of reward out of it for yourself, right? For sure, man. Because you, you kind of said it in one way or another in the beginning, right? Like everybody's on their own journey. Everybody's got their own path, right? Mm -hmm. So if success comes on the path that you're on, great. Yep. But if it doesn't, do you still love what you're doing? Yeah. And that doesn't mean being a DJ. That doesn't mean being a stockbroker. It's whatever you're doing. Right. Right. If you're a fucking cattle rancher, do you love doing it? Right. Yes. Yeah. Then you're happy. Yep. The key to happiness is just finding what you're most passionate about and putting all your time towards it. Yep. Because then it's not a job. Then it's a. Then it's true passion. Well, there's some days where it's a job. Oh God, yeah, I know. <laughs> I was gonna be negative as I was saying that. I was like, we're exhausted right now. Right. <laughs> <laughs> from our job, from no, but, our passion, but right? It's, but it's fucking good tired, man. Yeah, you know, it's it like is, a man. It's a tired that you can be happy about. Yeah, my mom's like, she's like, you're so busy. I'm like, it's good busy. Yep. You know, like yep. it's nothing that I'm like upset to be doing. Yep. You know, like. I'm rocking fucking five, six interviews today and I've never been more excited, right? Awesome. Like to be able to sit down with everybody and have this time and I love it. It doesn't matter to me how much time it takes or how much money it costs because I enjoy it. Right. You know? Yeah. Um, but I want to get into your experience a little more as a DJ as well. You have shared the lineups with some awesome names, man. Maceo Plex, Dubfire, Eric Pritz, just to name a few. Something that I always try and think about as well is the art of an opening or closing DJ. Mm -hmm. You know, it's, it's a matter of respect. It's a matter of knowledge. 100%, man. 100%. What's your perspective on the art of it? Um, I mean, you kind of nailed it, dude, yeah. <laughs> to be honest. I mean, it's like know who you're playing with and yeah. also know who you're playing for. Right. And so, you know, if you're just mindful of what you best think that that situation is going to look and feel like, mm -hmm. you know, it's just going to allow you to choose better tracks and yeah. just, you know, yeah, it's just like you're you just sort the of pace really, right? Yeah, man. Or, yeah. or like closing it out strong. Like yeah. at that point, like, like closing sets are a little bit different in the sense where it's just like, okay, yeah. like I want to be respectful in terms of what the guy played 
you know, before me. Like right. I want, like whatever you do should be complimentary to what they do. Yeah. But like also shift fucking gears, man, because like <laughs> if you're closing the shit out, like yeah. fucking let's rock this shit. Right, right, you know? right, right. So, you know, then that's a different set, obviously, than an opening set where yeah. it's just like, dude, you're setting a vibe, you're setting a tone. Like yep. the rest of the night, like, is it is it gonna just like, you know, is the jet gonna take off in the normal fucking <laughs> optimal takeoff trajectory? I love or that. Or is you know, the next guy gonna, gonna have be to turbulent? fucking delay you out, reset the fucking room, you know, and just like, it's just, dude, it's so much better when the music just starts and it's good from the fucking yeah, first beat, you know? absolutely. Is it still special for you? I mean, I'm sure it is, but handing the decks off or even... Oh, it's amazing, dude. I, I love it. It's like, honestly, I I would very much love to, you know, do more traveling and like play out of town and stuff. And, sure. you know, I don't, I don't do a ton of it, but when I get to do it, it's really cool. Yeah. And so I would certainly love to do more of that. But at the same time, man, like I really love being involved in what I'm involved in here in Chicago and getting to play with a lot of these guys and mm -hmm. it's just like man you if if you are like a solid proper opener for these guys like like they they, remember they see you. a lot of people open yeah, you know they not do. everybody's cut from that same cloth and right. it's just well you can make your you can you can weave your your tight your, your yeah. cloth tighter yeah, yeah, you know yeah. higher thread count <laughs> over the course of time right yeah but like you know it just you know, you, you, you got to put in the work to do it. And it's just, it's a really like rewarding feeling when you get like a little bit of love and respect and stuff from some guys you really fucking think the world of, you know? Yeah, of course. Now it seems like you have a, a personal relationship with choose, uh, choosing some bias, do you? Mm -hmm. Cause you've booked them for a lot of events yeah. and you've vested I've seen as well. Yeah. Do Miami. Yep. Did that relationship spawn from you opening or closing? Uh, no. So, well, it spawned actually for me. Like I, there was a club, uh, called vision. Mm -hmm. And it was kind of legendary, and uh, <laughs> it was in the space before it turned to Castle, which then turned to Tau. Oh, okay. So got it. Yeah, um, that place. That's just the building. Oh man, it's like that was a special place when it was Vision. Uh -huh. And uh, anyway, I like I, I worked there for a really long stretch, and just like even as how a DJ? I uh, actually like just as as a DJ, but like also working for the venue full time and helping like produce curate like execute all these bookings every week okay, like you know cool. so all these like yeah, larger yeah. scale shows 1200 operations cap room, like, yeah, we're, you yeah. know we're like not not venue operations but like all the marketing operations booking you know okay. artist liaison like you know event management you're moving every, the needle yeah. though yeah of course so gotcha. that was like that's also given me like a really amazing experience and just skill set that yeah. I just learned along the way that like Dude, like, really, not many other people will, will get that kind of experience in their life. I'm super sure. thankful for that. Yeah. Um, but you know, I actually like booked them, Jason's bios. Yeah. Uh, and they were just, dude, they were super cool from the first time I met them, and mm -hmm. just, you know, like they were just really easy to work with. And I asked them, uh, you know, seven years ago. Now at this point, I was just wow. like, like, because uh, we were we were doing boat parties and stuff on this boat in Miami, and mm -hmm. I was just like, well, I want to do my own, you know. And so I was just like, what could we, what could we do, what could we package? And so I just like talked to them. I was like, hey, do you guys want to have like a stereo label boat party like yeah. on this boat? And they're like, yes. yes. <laughs> and so, yeah, man, and it was great. We just like branded it around like their label and just, mm -hmm. you know, you know, it's it's like you can always book an artist, but it's like if you can help them like nurture their baby, it, you can create such a more cool like experience because right. it's just, you know, then all of a sudden it's different. It's not just a booking. It's like, it's their brand. Yes. You know? Yes. And so it's really cool to have like helped them build uh, their party. just like the last seven years, like in Miami, it's been great. That's awesome. And so, um, but yeah, man, like they're, yeah, they're good dudes. And I could say the same for like a lot of guys that, you know, I've either booked or played with or, mm -hmm. you know, whatever. It's just like, you know, you don't, you don't make BFF with like absolutely everybody, you know, but yeah, you'll, you you'll, you'll connect with a lot of really awesome artists. Yeah. But, you'll really connect with like so a true. really you know small handful you never that, know like, you just you know it's so interesting i mean you brought up so many things there that i relate to as well like i i've been on uh, holy ship twice mm -hmm. and it, the first year it was crazy for me because i'm just seeing you know these fucking guys walking right past me i'm starstruck you know i'm like <laughs> the first year i like kind of talked to some guys and i was like hey green velvet what's up man Chicago, right. blah 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 right last year i was like i'm fucking talking to these guys i'm doing it <laughs> do you ask and him I, you ask him if you could put on his mohawk <laughs> we found, one of my friends still says this he says he goes up to me he goes is that hair real he goes nope and just like pulls it off <laughs> like that it's such a fucking awesome guy uh but i was i just go up to like camel fat yeah and i'm just thinking to myself does 
them I know who you are. Like, you guys are fucking awesome. Like, yeah. killing it. And they were just good guys. We started talking about Everton soccer. I was talking shit to them about <laughs> Chelsea. Hilarious, you know? And, like, not to say I necessarily connected with them on this level, but it's like... No, but it, but it shows you that at the, at the end of the day, real too, people. like, yeah, they're, they're real people. And just, like, yeah. they're just they're doing what they're doing because they're fucking good at it. I know. And I feel like I was kind of raised, like, on the celebrity mindset. I guess the Hollywood, like, oh, these people are rude, all this type of stuff. Mm. They don't like their fans. I've never experienced that with anybody, any DJ that I've met. And it's so inspiring yeah. for me to be like, the more I do this, the more people I meet. And it seems to me, fuck, the more friends I have all yeah. the time, you know? Absolutely. And I always think about this too, you know, like people go in and out of your life, right? Yep. So probably some of your college frat buddies, right? Yep. Like in that time, you're like, these are my best friends, you know, all this type of stuff. And not to say that I'm not friends with those people, yeah. but you move on in life yeah, and man. you connect with someone like you and we're in the same arena. And we're all cheering for the same team. Yeah. And that's when things are the most special. <laughs> for sure. Right? Yeah. No, and especially now too, man. I mean, Chicago is in a really cool place right Dude, now. It it's is. just like and just, you know, I I like the fact that I that I have, you know, a little bit more seniority and just being involved with sure. things than like a lot of people like you know, whether I like it or not, I'm kind of just becoming like a fucking scene elder and shit. So like <laughs> okay. but, it's, but it's cool. Like I like I embrace yeah. it, you know. And Except but it. it's like but having essentially been involved with things for like 15 years here yeah. in Chicago like I've seen it kind of go through a lot of cycles I've yeah. seen it you know like people kind of come and go and you know whatever but it's just like you you really grow to appreciate the way that things are now like having sure. that perspective of course because like I've never seen just the scene in general in Chicago be so collaborative and so friendly with, you know, mm -hmm. each, you know, camps and, you know, it's like, and, and people, you know, see the, the power and the beauty of, you know, working together and accomplishing yeah, a, a greater goal, you know? So it's, yeah, Chicago's in a really cool place right now. What do you think has been the biggest change you've seen? Just positive collaboration, or negative? Yeah. Collaboration. Yeah. You know? Everybody's homies. Yeah. Everybody is. Yeah. It's crazy. <laughs> like you said, you know, like before we got on, you're like, oh, I listen to Alex and Arby one, I listen to the Tsunami one, like... Yeah. I I feel so blessed and lucky to be in Chicago in this like you're in it for 15 15 years you said, right? Yep. This is my fourth year living in Chicago and again, every day I feel like I get more friends and become closer to the scene and I kind of feel like I'm like this podcast of course too is, is a great way for me to actually get to know people outside yeah. of like a club environment, you know? Absolutely. And it's it's special for me personally and and I love interviewing guys like you because it just there's a lot of similarities mm -hmm. you know and it's doing it for the right reasons yep. if it's all under one fucking umbrella man everybody's <laughs> doing it for the love of music yeah you know yeah and that's 100%. the coolest thing about chicago but i want to get into vested so okay. for the people that don't know tell us what it is and tell us when it all started all right um so vested is uh essentially my umbrella mm -hmm. and it's uh <laughs> it's a big it's, ass umbrella too well i mean it's i'm trying to open it up you know um <laughs> It's it's essentially well it's it's my brand and essentially just like you know the word means what it means it's just you know if you have a vested interest in something you have an unwavering long time committed yeah. you know yep. uh, effort you know that you're putting towards something and that's just kind of how I feel about music and stuff so I just mm -hmm. thought it was a fitting name you know yeah and so um, it's an event brand and also a label uh, the label is a little younger mm -hmm. uh, but I've been doing like this January will be like six years. Congratulations, um, that's awesome. Thank you. Um, and the label I've been doing for, a, it's creeping up on like three. Cool. And so, uh, yeah, man, it's just, it's it's my platform to showcase the spectrum of sound that I love, mm -hmm. which essentially, you know, ranges from, you know, deeper sounds to, you know, some like tech sounds, some house sounds and progressive. And it's just, it's really kind of like, like the power triforce of, I guess you could say the yeah. sounds of what I, I sort of, <laughs> uh, you know, showcase in the, in the, the spectrum, you know, there's the deep, you know, deeper sounds within all of this and then more like aggressive later hour sounds yeah, and course. whatever. But like, you know, the, the, the three pillars are really like house techno progressive. Okay. And so, um, yeah. Everything that I like just, you know, tends to have just not, like nice rolling bass lines, just yeah. like groovy, oh, that's deep, my shit. peppered with like melodic stuff, but also like, you know, a little kind of like, not aggressive, but I like shit to gallop, you know? <laughs> so Wow, I've never heard anybody say that. <laughs> Tony, did you hear that? He likes shit to gallop. Interesting. <laughs> that's good. But uh, yeah, man, and so it's just, you know, that's like... I don't know, Sherman that's like, is stable, that's why. <laughs> <laughs> 
bad boy. <laughs> yeah, man, we're out. We're out on the farmstead here. So like, we're doing an interview I guess, on a yeah, farm. I, I guess yeah. gallop. I guess gallop is a, an appropriate God term damn, for right man. now. Um, Love it. Double entendre there. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, man, it's just that's you know that's my umbrella and which under which I do everything. I do a radio show under that too, and it's yeah. just you know, and so it just yeah. Uh, I've been booking, you know, shows with uh, a lot of artists that, you know, I love and respect and especially the ones that I book as like vested events and showcases yeah. and stuff. Um, usually I, you know, if I've never worked with an artist for the first time, like I'm usually pretty excited to like bring them. But then, you know, after that, it's just, you know, because I've connected with them in some kind of way that like mm-hmm. we just stay connected and they like playing and it's just you know, yeah. ultimately like ultimately my goal is to get everybody that participates on the label side you know, to be participating on the event side as well. That's and, great. You know, so ranging from me, even like my peers to, you know, these like global touring guys, like, you know, like I yeah. love, I, you know, I, and, and it's slowly starting to kind of happen. I'm picking off, you know, nice. kind of like, you know, guy here, guy there. And then, you know, it's like, it's, it's a long game, you know? Yeah, of course. So, um, yeah, it's just, that's my that's umbrella, great. man. It's, that's it's great. My, it's my agenda. Yeah, absolutely. I, what have been uh, many, maybe any obstacles you've had to overcome and how'd you get through them? Um, there's a fair you just, share. Yeah. You just you just you just push through, man. Yeah, yeah <laughs> you know, absolutely. Like, it's a that's a cop out answer, but it's like I get it's, it. But it but it really is sort of also yeah, the of course. answer. Um, you took yeah, a lot I mean, of chances and you made your mistakes and you know it's it's like it's good to be smart about what you do though. Like you know just try and you know if you are taking chances, like you know try and like yeah figure out your chances. You know yeah. like it just you know and sometimes it's not gonna work, but you know if something doesn't work, that just means that you now know why it didn't work hopefully and you yeah. do it a different way like you know I, I always try and take smart calculated risks yeah right plan mm-hmm. it's good to jump off the cliff sometimes but <laughs> do i have a parachute do right. i have a backup or, plan, or right? is there water down there or is right, there cool. water down there yeah of course <laughs> where's there hay should i just do as many stable jokes as i can here <laughs> that's awesome so i want to get into your personal productions first off congratulations on the body zp hitting number one thank you on progressive i mean dude Give me some. That's fucking beat port. <laughs> that's the mecca. Thanks, I man. mean, how did that feel? It felt great. Yeah. Yeah. That's awesome. Really how long did you work on that before you actually got it to that point? What was the door to door time frame there? It it took a minute, but like sometimes you don't work on a project like just straight through, you know? True. Sometimes you like work to a point and when you reach a point where you're just like you find yourself just like listening to stuff over and over again and like nothing's like kind of clicking anymore yeah. at that moment sometimes it's good to just like walk away from it and yeah. like you know maybe you need to walk away from it for you know maybe just like go to the store and get something to eat or maybe <laughs> like shelf it for you know like a couple weeks yeah. until you have a chance to like kind of let your mind settle and revisit it and then, yeah oh yeah why didn't i think of that like it's crazy you know, how that works just, right yeah so um yeah i mean that that track probably like on and off over eight months probably like mm-hmm. came together there was like a lot of different incarnations of it um just also because like i worked with like a vocalist and stuff on that one and so yeah. there was a lot of like kind of it's a great track versions that were set back and forth yeah and in collaboration for it and stuff yeah. so but yeah it was a really cool experience that's awesome what uh what daw do you use uh i use ableton ableton yeah have you always used ableton um yeah pretty much i mean i used reason a little bit for like a like a synthesis course i took mm-hmm. uh and and that was useful for that but i just like got rid of after that ableton's just yeah. better for what i need to do I, honestly you can do everything on ableton it's awesome you can like <laughs> put together radio shows promo mixes yeah, you can dude, like you dope. know yeah produce, like you can do absolutely everything you need to do on ableton it's amazing it's all in one i know i'm, I'm logic like logic works for me for what i do but yep. there are definitely things about logic that Ableton has and Logic doesn't, and I'm like, God damn it! <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's like, yeah. do you, like, do you have an iPhone? You know, like, mm-hmm. there's some things about the iPhone. You're like, why do they have it like this? Like, right. that's all up and down in Logic. <laughs> so it is what it is. I accept it. I'm an Apple elitist, whatever you want to call it. Yep. But that's awesome. Do you feel like you found your sound then? I mean, I feel like it's always going to be evolving. Yeah. But like, I really love the avenue at like kind of where I am and where I sort of see it all going mm-hmm. to. So yeah, it's, I guess, yeah, I guess it's good to have like just found a lane that I like, Yeah, you know, absolutely. And not, that, not that I really ever like really strayed too far from this. It, it, like I've always been kind of, uh, like I like progressive, deep, groovy, just, you yeah. know, like, I mean, I've been, that's been my avenue for like quite some time, but it's yeah. just, but there's also a lot of spectrum there and it's like it's been good to kind of narrow it down a little bit more get a little bit nicher like yeah a little more niche with you know yeah nicher <laughs> i like that but yeah 
Yeah, man, things are things are in a good place right now for That's sure. That's awesome. That's awesome. Now I want to get a little bit about the Chicago underground scene and your involvement. Okay. You know what? What do you think about a Chicago underground event makes it Chicago? Well, having it in the city helps, of course. But uh, <laughs> <laughs> yes, I mean location, location, location. I I don't know. Have you been to afters or yeah, like, for sure in yeah. other cities? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, Man, I, every every city is different, True. you know. And what makes Chicago Chicago? Mm-hmm. You know, like it's I don't think that yeah, I don't think that anybody like throws a party there and like tries to set out to make it the most Chicago <laughs> shit they can, you know. <laughs> yeah. But um, yeah, I don't know, man. It's just you know, it's it's who we are. Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. What's been like a memorable experience for you, whether you're DJing or not? Um. Too many to come to mind. I'm sure. Yeah, man. But. I mean, there's yeah, there's a bunch. I should have I should have put a little more thought into that question when I read that's it. Okay. Like, <laughs> that's okay. That's you've got a lot. Yeah, dude. It's and, and I'm like super lucky to just be able to say that. Like, yeah. To be honest. Seriously. Um, I'm glad. Yeah. Thank you. I mean, you're so humble about it too. Thank you. Yeah. That's important too. Just like I mean, we've gone into it many times in this conversation. Like you're doing it for the right reasons, right? Yep. I don't see you slowing down. <laughs> What's next? Um. Just I'm just staying on this grind man yeah like yeah just like i've got some awesome music that i'm releasing both like some of it's mine and then some of it is just like label release stuff that i'm just super excited about because mm-hmm. i'm just like working with dope artists and yeah just, like it's just things are in a good place man so i've got a couple releases that are going to come out over the next like probably four months mm-hmm. um i have like some cool uh you know gigs lined up one in particular i'm super excited about um are you familiar with jeremy olander yeah of course so i'm playing with jeremy on a boat in new york whoa and uh that's gonna be super awesome i can't wait dope yeah wow so fuck that's awesome yeah that's right september 14th if you want to hop a flight september 14th (laughs) wow How, how did you get that gig or who's that through well um you know man it's like it's it's kind of funny because I didn't like I didn't actually necessarily go like seeking that gig like it sort of oh, found baby, me. Oh baby, that's how and you know. So, Let's like, go. Yeah. yeah, it was great, <laughs> and it's just it's just a testament to just you know, just working well with you know other people over the course of time, and yeah. just you know like there's obviously like a level of like respect involved and stuff. Shaking when, a lot of hands in 15 years, man. You know, but like also trying to play some fucking good sets and people being receptive to them. Damn you know? right. And so um, yeah, man, just like keeps looking out and they're just like dude you should play you know one of these parties like i was actually given a choice of a few and i was like jeremy jeremy yeah like let's do that one dude have you seen <laughs> his uh i'm sure you have his circla Are you familiar with circla yep. uh on top of that fucking castle yeah jesus <laughs> that is so yeah. sick those guys do such cool like so events. unique yeah and it's it's so like they've they've very much found their niche like oh just, my like they're gonna they're gonna run out at some point of like amazing <laughs> locations though. Like they're, they're gonna picking. have to start they're gonna have to start redoing something. I know they're like. gonna have to build their own. <laughs> I love those. I think it's so cool. Like since I've gotten into it in the past six years, you know the DJ Mag ones, the you know Boiler Rooms, of course. It's crazy because Boiler Room was really, at least from my perspective, kind of the first one to start doing those, right? Kind of. Yeah. yeah. There's like Beat TV and oh, stuff yeah, too. Oh yeah, Beat TV. Of and there's course. like, but yeah, I think. But those like, are like festivals, right? Like Boiler Room is like. Yeah, they're kind of everything, but like Boiler Room like was a little niche in the way where yeah. it was like hey here's this like dirty party in a basement somewhere that you don't know about but we have this awesome dj and look yeah. everybody's partying their ass off yeah and dude and, you know, yeah and so like people <laughs> people like really responded strongly to that initially yeah. you know and it's so sick and so like like what circles do and i feel is really cool but it's but it's totally different in the sense that they're just trying to like shoot these like yeah like visually stunning like locations it and just it, like super enhances the you know, music yeah yeah it's so cool God. Yeah. Have you ever thought about doing one of those? Like, I mean, setting up your own like boiler room esque. I mean, maybe, have you been to one you know, in Chicago it's, or anything? It's uh, they they had one. I didn't go to it, but um, it was with Gene, right? It was well, they had they had like a like oh, a small was, series of them or whatever yeah, yeah, within yeah, yeah, like yeah, two yeah. days yeah. or whatever. Um, but uh, yeah, I it like it was it was cool what they did, you know. But it's just like yeah, like what circles does is like sort of on a, another level, man. It's like, well, it's not the same thing at the same time. It's like it's not so. But I, I really, I really, I really respect what Circle does. Like, I'm, it would be really cool to produce something like that. But like, man, that takes a village, you know. Holy shit! And so, does it. and not, not that I don't know enough people, but it's just like the organizational effort behind it. You know what? Like, yeah. sometimes you got to pick and choose your battles. What's man. the ROI on that? Like financially too, right? I mean, can't, for the first one, it can't be a lot. <laughs> you, you Do you probably, ever make money on the first thing of anything, though? Not usually. If, if you're smart about it, you do. Yeah. 
If you're a businessman. No. Yeah, we're trying to learn that. I, I, I'm not sure if you've heard of the Lavender Group before, but me and Tony have been hosting events since last September. Mm -hmm. We've certainly had our wins and our losses, you know? And yep. like I said, we, we take our chances, but I've learned so much about just like t mark marketing, you mm -hmm. know, target marketing, like niche groups, like you said, or niche yep. or what did you say? You know? <laughs> <laughs> I was saying, say, like, yeah. make it a little more niche. -er, yeah, a little, a little niche -er. more niche. -er. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so, I mean, especially in Chicago too, like when I first started hosting events, I was like promoting it to my friends really hard. And I was like, if they don't come, who's going to come? Right. And then I was like, damn, there's 4 million people that live in Chicago. If I can't get 150 <laughs> people or 200 people to come to this event, like what am I doing? Right. I mean, if they're wrong reasons. Right. Right. Or I'm not doing it right. So after that, you know, we started doing all this other stuff and it's been so exciting since then. Right. And I love like, you probably book a lot of people, right? Supply the set times and stuff. Like I've gotten a lot from that, giving other people opportunities. Mm -hmm. I think that's what I like most about the Chicago scene. I, I feel a true feeling of gratitude from people. For sure. You know, follow yeah. up texts the next day, like yeah. next time I see them, like they come to support events and stuff. Yeah, for sure. And then I do the same thing as well. And yeah. I just love that team game feeling here. Yeah. I don't know enough about other cities just because I haven't been doing it enough, but right. I definitely know from growing up in the Midwest that there's something to be said about the type of people that are here. Yep. You know? Yep. I mean, who are some who are some of the people you want to give a shout out to like that have helped you along the way? Uh, there's there's two guys in particular that have like helped me in a big way. Yeah. One of them's Curly. Of course. And uh, the other one's a guy named Johnny Chaos. Okay. And uh, he's he was like he moved away for a while and whatever, but like he he had a really proper heyday here yeah. in terms of like you know playing a lot of like the kind of type of shows that like I play you know I guess in a rough way of speaking sure um but like he was you know playing for curly and stuff yeah. and whatever and like he wound up becoming like my roommate and so well i oh, became wow. his roommate actually is what happened <laughs> and like and then just yeah man and, and he's like one of my best friends and so like um yeah like those two guys have been like especially big brotherly to me that's awesome um, and just yeah like just mentoring and you know yeah like helping me get opportunities mm -hmm. and you know stuff like that and it's just and it, and it feels good to be able to like turn around and do that for other people too man absolutely it you takes know? a village like you said yep. it really does yep you can't do it on your own that's just yep. a fact it's exhausting if you try to i mean yep. tony always says to me you gotta have somebody in your corner or multiple people yeah you know and i think that's what it's all about absolutely man uh but you're putting a guest mix together what can we expect in that so uh what i'm actually giving you is uh i recorded my set last night oh that okay I here for serenity base yes and uh it was it was cool man you know like um there was there was a there was a funky wonky bunch of us you okay know? And, i got gotcha. um, <laughs> yeah it was good times man so it's uh you know, I, I, I'll just let the mix speak for itself, Absolutely. but it's a, you know, it's a little, it's a little heady, it's melodic, it's groovy, it's a little techy. It's, yeah. uh, you know, actually, RV, uh, who did he say said it? I think he said, Z, uh, Zenus said it, mm -hmm. Zenus White, uh, he, he, he called my set Cerebral Techno, and I'm oh, like, shit. that's cool, like, yeah. I'll take that. Like, <laughs> that's a compliment. Yeah. So, um, Absolutely. Yeah. So, yeah. I Hell don't, yeah. Uh, I'm excited I'll, I'll let about that, that speak for itself. Yeah, absolutely. Where can we find you at on social media? Um, Invested as well, of course. Yes. <laughs> I'm like, all right, what order Ooh. do I see them in? <laughs> I'll tag so, it, of course. Yeah. 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 Like, I'm, on, I'm just in general, I'm on Facebook. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I repost everything to Twitter, but I'm shitty with Twitter. It's just, it's, there's you know, a lot to keep up with these days, like, right? But yeah, Instagram. Uh, yeah, Facebook and Instagram for the most part. All my music for the most part goes on uh, SoundCloud. Okay. Uh, I do a radio show on DIFM as well. Awesome. Um, and so, yeah, there's uh, there's Facebook and SoundCloud pages um, for Vested as well. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, man, it's I, I try to I try to keep stuff fresh and, and updated regularly yeah. with uh, with good nuggets. Yeah, God, it's a whole other job, right? The social media <laughs> game <laughs> yeah, these it days. Is, dude. It is. How much? I mean, you must have seen some serious changes from when you first were in this, right? Yeah, dude, it's been it's been like. I can say that just about myself in general, even just like growing up. Like <laughs> yeah. I have, I, like I'm straddling this line in my growing up. Like on one side, <laughs> like my one leg is like on like the analog side of like yeah. growing up. You know where it's just like you didn't have a even a pager. You know for your mom to like buzz you on to tell you when to <laughs> yeah. come home. It's like yeah. street lights are coming on. All right, we should like make moves. Right, you right, know? right, right. And so you know to then like I graduated you know college and that's like kind of right when like you know like shortly after you said 2000 you know, or like oh two is kind yeah, of so when it's i like, like y2k school. time yeah and yeah. so like yeah and then just like you know two or maybe three years after that the first iphone rolled out yep. you know yep and uh and then just dude and then everything has changed you know like God, and so it's, it's yeah, insane it's it's been like quite the paradigm shift i know and like <laughs> there's an expectation of social media like i mean obviously 
there's so many great things about it, but there are also, mm. you know, the tough parts. But yep. I mean, I which, enjoy it. Which makes me a fan, though. Like when when like uh, you know places implement like a stay off your cell phones on the dance floor yes, rule. Yes, I love that. Isn't that crazy? That's the world we live in, though. Yeah. All of a sudden, but it's like, almost like a necessary. It is thing now. It's you like, gotta enjoy it. Yeah, because otherwise, it's just like, dude, just watch the show. Don't watch it through your phone. Like you're not gonna. Are you gonna sit there and watch all dude. your videos? It's like. I always like think I'm gonna like. I used to take videos all the time at festivals, and then I was like, why did I take a video of every fucking song? Like I'm on the shitter the next day, and that's the only time I watch it, and that's it. <laughs> <laughs> and that's it, and that's yeah. the only time. And then what? I'm just like yep. never gonna watch that. Yeah. It's 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 not the sensory experience you yep. originally yep. experienced. But on the plus side, like. Yeah. It's never been easier to reach people Amen. with anything, you yep. know, but I mean, with everybody having the ability to do that, like the airwaves are a little crowded, you yeah, know, <laughs> sure. so you got to like fight to, you know, get your message through and stuff, yeah. but it just, you know, I mean, ultimately you just need to, you need to just be persistent and you need to be consistent. Yeah. I think there's a lot to be said about consistency. I mean, I think you're a living, breathing example of that Thank you, hustler, man. right? Thank you. Well, I appreciate you coming on. Oh, RJ's a pleasure. This was a pleasure. Thank you. Yeah, absolutely, man. <laughs> Let's get into it right now, huh? All right, sounds good. With a little bit of cerebral techno. <laughs> Let's do it. <laughs>